pleasure to be here with you and to share with you some new data on new insulin in diabetes treatment. So, you are all familiar how the glucose stimulates the insulin production and how the insulin with the help of glucose transporters helps the glucose enter in the in the in the cells. And this is how is the insulin secretion in people without diabetes with a fast increase as a first period and the second one after 30 to 60 minutes. But what is not the same thing in people with, with diabetes is that when, when the people have especially type 2 diabetes, the response to the oral glucose is later. What is, what is called the lazy pancreas and the increase is less efficient than in healthy subjects without diabetes. We all know this names and figures who, who were the discoverers of insulin and less known is the dog. Marjorie, the first diabetic dog in the world and the first experimental patient with diabetes treated with insulin. And we also know the most famous patient in the world, Leonard Thompson, who was the first insulin treated patient in, in 1922. The insulin was a real miracle and one of the greatest discoveries in the medicine. In only two months you may see the difference in this child with type 1 diabetes from almost starving to a norm almost normal child of this age. But still diabetes is a constellation of complications due to the bad metabolic control. And we all know that when the type 2 diabetes is discovered, we have more than 10 years of prediabetes and in some cases the, com the complications are already there as Professor Schalko as noted during her presentation. And higher is the glycated hemoglobin, more possibility has our patients to have com chronic complications. But on the other hand, if we reduce with 1% glycated hemoglobin, we can reduce to 37% microvascular complications such as kidney disease and blindness. We can reduce for 43% the amputation due to fatal peripheral blood vessel disease. We can reduce to 21% death related to diabetes, 40% heart attacks, and 12% the stroke. So we need to be aggressive since the beginning with a good metabolic control to prevent the chronic complication of diabetes, always having as a goal the glycated hemoglobin of less than 7%. But still now, after all these years, we have a clinical inertia to healthcare providers, to general practitioners, and even to specialists in endocrinology. So by the time when the patient with type 2 diabetes initiates insulin therapy, more than five years has passed with a glycated hemoglobin of, of over 8%. And from one drug to another drug or to add insulin, the time is passing even for the specialist. Even also we have to accept that specialists or endocrinologists are a little bit more aggressive in treating their patients. But in these slides, 
you can see that when the doctors are asked when they can start the insulin, if they are the patient, they will be given insulin of aggregated hemoglobin of 8.2. They would consider for their patients at 8.7, and actually they recommend when the aggregated hemoglobin is more than 9.6. So we are egoistic, but in some cases it's always better to be the patient so you can think better and earlier for your patient. You all know that uh, higher is the fasting glycemia, higher is her role in the glycated hemoglobin. That's why we always say that fix fasting first. That's why we normally, when we begin the insulin treatment, we begin with basal insulin. But earlier we begin the treatment with insulin, more efficacy will have this treatment. You can see that if we begin the insulin treatment when the aggregated hemoglobin is less than 8%, in 75% of cases we, are in, we have a better metabolic control. If we begin later the insulin, less results we will have even with insulin treatment. This is the normal daily plasma insulin profile with volume during the meals and with uh, basal insulin level during the fasting period or during the night. And this is what we try to mimic with our insulin treatment. So the rapid acting insulin analogs are administered in the meal time, mimic physiologic insulin profile, improve postprandial glycemic level and have lower risk of hypoglycemia. The first analog insulin was Lispro, when we have changed the places of proline and lysine. And the second one was the insulin aspart, when we have changed one amino acid proline to aspart. And that's why this fast analog has a faster insulin action profile and a low risk of hypoglycemia. And it, it was almost similar in, for both uh, first analogs, so Lispro and uh, Aspart, and it is the same also for the Fulithin, and they have quite similar profile between them. In this study, they, were, they have compared the profile of insulin uh, Novorapid and insulin umalog, and they have almost the same profile. Now we have a faster insulin aspart, FIASP, which has a much more earlier effect and a more cover of the postprandial glycemia with a lower risk of hypoglycemia and the other. And also, today, we have the insulin Lispro 200 units with, the, the, with less volume, always with the same efficacy compared, for example, with the neutral insulin. But in these cases, we need to have in consideration the risk for hypokalemia, so we need to monitor our patient as the risk and there is a risk for fluid retention, so we need to be very careful in patients with heart failure. And the most common adverse events, as for all the insulins, are hypoglycemia, allergic reactions, injection site reaction, and dystrophy. So normally, the rapid acting insulin analogs, they are covering the part that the normal insulin of our pancreas needs to cover for the meals. But still, we need to have the insulin for the basal brain. That's why we have the YRG, the first one, when we have the changes in amino acids, and uh, Tetemir, which were the first two basal insulins. And today we have the first biosimilar basal analog with Abasaglar, produced by Lili, is the same elements as in insulin glycine, and in this study you can see that during 
the, the, the study, we didn't see any, any difference between the Gargis, the original product, and the Abasa card. And we use the basal, uh, the basal analogs as a first insulin when we begin the treatment with oral antidiabetics plus adding and basal insulin. And we can use it as a basal insulin, the basal bolus therapy for patients with type 1 or even in type 2 diabetes, which are the new insulins that we are using. One of them, which is the most known, is the Tegrotec. So, long multi examiners are assembled, and during the injection in the subcutaneous tissue, they are divided to monomers and from these monomers are absorbed to the depot into the circulation. That's why the insulin degludec had a steady profile during more than 24 hours till 32 hours. And in several studies, when it is compared, for example, with insulin glargine, we have seen that these patients treated with insulin degludec has less hypoglycemia during the whole time and especially during the night. And today we have a combination of insulin decrudec plus insulin aspar. And when these patients have been treated with twice daily insulin decrudec plus insulin aspar, they have a better metabolic control, greater reduction in glycated hemoglobin, and less doses compared to the basal bolus therapy and we have only one or two injections per day. Insulin lisprocagulation is another basal insulin who is in the market for two years now in some countries. I don't know if you have it here in Egypt. In Albania we don't have it. We just have Degrotec this year. But anyway, Compared with insulin glargine, they had a more steady profile during the 24 hours, so less hypoglycemia. But still we need to control and to have an intensive glycemic control, because better we have the metabolic control, less complications we will have for people with diabetes. So what is important is to see how these new insulins are uh, what are their products producing as a metabolic control for people with diabetes? In the study edition one, patients treated with insulin glargine had almost the same metabolic control as with insulin <coughs> glargine 100 during the whole period of the study, but they had less hypoglycemia during the night. And what is more important, less weight gain with insulin glargine 300 compared to insulin 100. In the study conclude, which is uh, given the result during the EASD Congress in June this year, they have compared the results from the patients treated with insulin decrudec compared to insulin glargine. And during the whole study period, patients treated with insulin decrudec has less <laughs> hypoglycemia in general and especially during the night, almost the same indicated hemoglobin during the whole period of time, but lower doses of insulin decrudec 200 compared to insulin glargine 300. And the patients with insulin glargine 300 gain less weight compared to insulin decrudec. What, what has been one of the issues, especially with the basal insulin, has been the receptor binding affinities, especially to AIGF1 receptors. Speaking for a higher risk for cancers in general. And it was more pronounced with the basal insulin. 
The study origin shows that there is no increase in cancer incidence with basal <coughs> insulins. So if we see the results from the study, we can see that in general we have almost the same risk or even less risk for uh, cancers in general, except for lung and for colon cancers, what is have a little more higher for the group treated with insulin therapy compared to the uh, control group, but it was not significant. And passing from the basal insulin to the inhaled insulin, the insulin exubera, which is still in use for almost 10 years now, there are some technosphere from the nose or from the throat that you can that pass directly to the uh, lungs. And you can see that, in general, they have a better control, especially for the post prandial glycemia. So they can be used as a bolus therapy. So we cannot completely disrupt the insulin treatment. So we still need to continue at least the basal insulin therapy. It has been used in, in people with type 1 diabetes and in people with type 2 diabetes, but they are contraindicated in patients with chronic <coughs> lung disease, and we need to monitor for the hypokalemia. One of the uh, adverse effects is hypoglycemia, as with all insulin, cough, cough, throat pain, and pain irritation. So, we need to remember that we need to titrate insulin to keep a good metabolic control of diabetes with implicated hemoglobin of less than 7%. To titrate basal insulin to, to achieve a level of 100, 110 milligram per deciliter of glycemia, and to titrate prandial insulin to have a post meal of less than 160 or at maximum 180 milligram per deciliter. Insulin therapy completes the lack of insulin in type 1 diabetes, supplement progressive deficiency in type 2 diabetes, can be added as a basal insulin to antidiabetic orals, full replacement requires a basal bolus regime, and hypoglycemia and weight gain are the main medical risks. But new insulins and injection devices facilitates use and has less this negative effect. So, in type 2 diabetes, to use, we need to use insulin according to a rule of 5 amps. More, as in more patients, more early at diagnosis or shortly after diagnosis, more physiologically, to prefer basal insulin first and add brandial uh, <laughs> insulin later, to treat more aggressively, treat to target, and more safely to minimize hypoglycemia. But for that, we, just, we don't just need to have insulins for monitoring, but we need to have the education for people with diabetes how to use them correctly and to avoid hypoglycemia and to avoid certain secondary effects as lipodystrophia. So, we have done a long way in almost 100 years, but we are still here. There are so, some promising techniques for the future, as it is the kind of nanoparticles with insulin that can be added or released the insulin when the glycemia is higher. And to conclude, the insulin it's a natural hormone created by nature, not by drug companies, and exactly what it is missing in people with diabetes. So we need to have insulin and we need to have control through the glycated hemoglobin, through the monitoring of diabetes, and through the education of the patient. Thank you very much.